everyone welcome back to another youtube video so i know it has been a while since i've uploaded i want to be completely transparent about that stuff i've been really busy with coaching sports school stuff like that so i'm going to be looking to do bi-weekly episodes i'm going to try to hold myself to that and be a bit more consistent when it comes to that stuff so today is going to be kind of a longer video because we're going to be looking to practice dribbling show you guys how to dribble the importance of it giving you those examples and how to utilize it well on top of that i might be moving away from complete only dribbling or i mean uh, mechanical guides and moving more towards things like maybe a let's play series from bronze to gc something where i can talk about really really important things that you need to know from every rank i know there's already some youtube guides on that but i really want to make sure it's something relatable and something that's gonna get the information across to you guys instead of being like oh yeah here just hit the ball like this or something giving you guys patterns to watch out for stuff that you guys really need to pay attention to when you're playing your games to help you rank up and get out of whatever rank you're in so with that being said, I'll be looking to do that as well as maybe some training guides. So stuff like training packs and completing every shot in a training pack, demonstrating how I'm completing the uh, the shot. And that's something that I will also utilize when it comes to my gamers ready coaching. If you are looking for more one on one specific help, you can check out my gamers ready page. That'll be linked in my profile. It's a really, really good way to work with me and have access to resources that I'm not really going to put on here because it's going to be more specific to you and what your goals are. When it comes to my gamers ready coaching i'm trying to help you reach whatever your goals are so everything we do will be based around that and i have a couple packages available to work with you and get step-by-step -step procedures so as i go through this dribbling video today i'm going to be going through these steps but obviously everyone's going to encounter different problems when they have when they do this dribbling they might not get it perfect immediately and they might need that one-on-one -on -one help so if you're looking for that you can definitely check out my gamers ready and get my my help that way and That'll allow me to fix the minor mistakes that are going on whenever you're dribbling, going for aerials, or looking at replays of what you're doing and fixing your bad habits and turning them to strong habits that will make you a bigger threat on the field and help you rank up. So with all my rambling over, we are going to get into this longer dribbling video. So like I said, this is going to be kind of a longer video. We're going to be focusing on a few steps to dribble and all of these steps are really important and you want to make sure you're following them one by one and not skipping because they lead into each other and build on on top of each other so dribbling is really important because it allows us to really advance into every other mechanic whether it's aerialing air dribble ceiling shots flip resets whatever it may be you need these fundamentals to be able to perform those other mechanics at a high consist contest i can't speak consistency so when we're doing this, we got to get comfortable with making light movements. I'm never going to hold down my W key, my S key, my throttle if you're on controller. I'm just going to make really light touches with the corners of my car. So we're getting comfortable with making those micro adjustments. So here I'm just going to hit it with the left and I'm switching to the other side and hitting it with the right. Pretty light touches, right? We're not trying to go very fast. We're trying to have discipline. I'm making really, really light touches. But when I get to the wall, I'm cutting. And the reason we're cutting is because we can't dribble on the walls. We don't want that ball near the walls. And that's really important to keep in mind when you're starting off your dribbles is you want to stay away from those walls. So we're just going to repeat this a few times. And that's going to be the first step. You're just going to want to practice this until you're comfortable. And then when you get close to that wall, you cut around and you reset yourself. Your goal is to go as slow as possible. Right? I'm not going too fast. I'm just taking my time. And then as we get close to this wall, we're going to cut around. And then we're going to move on to that next step. Just getting comfortable with this is going to be really important for you guys, making those micro adjustments, and then we can move on to the second step that we're going to talk about. So this next step is usually the hardest for people. We're trying to get that ball on top of your car. We, in a game, don't have time to make those light touches from the first step, so now we got to do it a bit faster. So we're going to start off with just a light tap. The ball's going really slow. A lot of what we're doing, we're trying to do it slow first, and once we get comfortable, we can speed it up. But we're letting it roll towards us, and as it gets near us, we're driving into it. And what's happening is that ball is rolling towards us. And when we drive into it, you're going to notice, bam, the ball bounces, right? And that's what allows us to get underneath it. So now this is kind of the mind, mind boggling thing is people usually don't really know about this, but the circle on the ground is what allows you to dribble. Sure. It tells you where the ball is. If it's in the air, you're able to look at that circle and see where that ball is. But it's really used for dribbling because once I hit this, if I'm right in the middle of that circle, the ball stays on top of my car, right? I don't have to focus on the ball. Actually, when I'm dribbling, I don't look at the ball. I'm only looking at the circle. Later on, you can start to look more at the ball, which will allow you to get more comfortable with different types of flicks. But early on, we're just focusing on staying right in the middle of that circle. And like I said, a lot of these steps build on each other. Right? I'm making those light adjustments. You see on my keyboard, I'm never holding down a key. I'm just making light adjustments. 
and if the ball starts to fall off my car, I boost back and get underneath it. Another important thing to keep in mind is if you want the ball to go forward, I move to the back of the circle, right? That'll move it forward. If I want that ball to go backwards, I move to the front of the circle. And then if I want to move to the right, I move to the left side of the circle. And if I want to move to the left, I move to the right side of the circle. So we want to make sure that we're understanding these concepts because they're going to be important, right? That's going to what's going to allow you to change direction. So now for the second step, you're going to be looking to make that light touch, get around a discipline, right? Taking our time. It's coming towards us. As it gets near us, we throttle slightly into it and then bam, we get right in the middle of that circle. And now our goal is to keep it on top of our car as long as possible. And same thing as step one, right? We can't dribble on the wall. So if we get close to a wall, we turn away. So we move to a side of the circle and we just make our way back to the other side. Constantly making micro adjustments and being in control of the ball. Because if the ball is controlling us, it has a max. It doesn't have a really max speed, but our car does. Right here, if I hold down W, I'm at ma my max speed, right? I can't go faster than this unless I boost. And even when you're boosting, you have a max speed, but the ball can go faster. So if you end up in a situation like this, the ball is controlling me right now, right? I have to try and constantly catch up to it. And then I just covered half the field in that distance, in that, in that time frame. And I didn't even get the ball on top of my car. That's pretty dangerous, right? We're just giving away possession. We don't want that. So we want to get comfortable making this light touch, turning around it. And then when it comes in, bam. And we get right in the middle of that circle. And we just focus on staying right in the middle of that circle constantly. Constantly right in the middle of that circle. And once we're comfortable with that, we can move on to that third step, which is going to be flicking. So now that you've mastered dribbling, maybe not mastered, but gotten more comfortable with it, you can advance to flicking, which is going to be usually the easiest part once you're comfortable flicking, or uh, sorry, dribbling and keeping that ball on top of your car, because now you just have to manipulate the ball into a position where you can flick. So now this ball rolls towards us, we get underneath it. And when we're flicking, we don't want that ball to be right in the middle of our car, right? I don't want to be right in the middle of the circle because if that happens and I front flip, that's not a flick, right? It's just kind of staying where it is. And then if I'm too far to the front of the circle, not a flick either, right? Pretty much the same thing as before. And if we get it on top of our car and it's way too much to the front, nothing happens, right? It just stays on the ground. So we want to get comfortable with that sweet spot. So... To get comfortable with that sweet spot, we're moving that ball to the front-ish and then making sure that it stays pretty much right in the front of our windshield. So getting comfortable with that front window area, watching that ball and moving it towards the front and then flicking forward by just front flipping. If you just front flip, that ball is going to flick up into the air and as you get more and more comfortable, you're going to have more control over it. And then you can perform it quicker. Get that ball on top of your car, front flip. And we got to make sure the ball's on that front, but not too much the front, because then the back of our car isn't flicking that up into the air, kind of like a catapult, you could think of it. So we got to get comfortable with that sweet spot on our car that allows us to get forward momentum, as well as putting it up into the air, something like that. And that's going to be your first flick that you're going to want to learn, because it's pretty common, it's pretty easy to do once you get comfortable with it. And it works. You don't need these advanced things like musty flicks. You can just do that. Bam, you flicked it over your opponent, and... You got a shot on target, you got a, a tap to the backboard, and then a teammate can follow it up, or you can follow it up. So that's the really important thing about flicking, is you don't need to do anything too too fancy. You just need those basics of getting on top of your car, and then flipping forward and getting that up into the air. Just kind of a basic front flip. So the last step here is to do it faster. Everything we've done kind of added on to each other. We had to make those micro adjustments from step one, of just constantly making these light touches, making those light touches with the corners of our car, and then the next step was to turn around, get that ball on top of our car like this. But this takes a while still. So now we want to do it even faster. So now we're going to make a light touch and cut around it by hitting the ball with the corner of our car and then getting ourselves into that circle. And then going back to micro adjustments, right, to move that ball to the front of our car and then front flipping. And that's pretty much the overall dribbling. It looks a lot easier than it is, which means you're going to have to practice like everything in life when it comes to reading, writing, math, whatever it may be. Everyone learns at a different rate and you got to practice it. You got to practice it and you will get better as long as you're having purposeful practice. And then, like I said, if you need that additional help or you want that one on one to, to help you guys out to learn it quicker, get it down faster and get some more precise um, direction based around you. Make sure to check out my gamers ready page that will be linked in my description. Um, and there'll be the name at the top left as well. If you just are on the website, you can find me through that. So now we're going to get into a few examples of some higher level gameplay where 
people are still dribbling. Here we have a really good example where Poseidon has full possession of this ball and he has space in front of him. Dak is in a pretty weird position and Poseidon understands and realizes that, which means he takes that as an opportunity to take his time. He doesn't know how much boost Dak has, so he needs to respect that and get a bit closer to the net to make a more threatening shot, which is what we can see here as we play this in 50% speed. So Poseidon gets control of that ball, gets it on top of his car and proceeds to flick to the right side so that deck is not able to save this. So here, if we go back for a second, we can see that Poseidon gets possession of this ball and we can even slow it down a bit more. Poseidon has possession of this ball. He's getting it on top of his car. He's getting control of it. He makes that touch on top of his car and proceeds to flick to the right, making it awkward for deck to make that save. And that allows him to utilize the space and time that he had in front of him in order to get a very good shot and a very threatening shot on target against deck. Here we have a really good example where a shot has been taken and it was slightly off target and Tony recognizes that there's not really anyone pressuring him. So as we let this replay go, you're going to see that Clark tries to rotate back to defense and Tony takes possession of this ball. He then is able to bait out Zoom and Zoom tries to pressure him. So if we switch over to this angle, we're going to see that Zoom is running at Tony to try and get that ball off of him. And Tony utilizes his dribbling skills after catching the ball off the wall to flick. After flicking over Zoom, he is now in a position where Zoom cannot really make a save and he's in front of the ball, allowing Convict to take possession while he goes and tries to demo Clark Splash. This allows them to take a shot on target where Clark is unable to make a save and Zoom is unable to get back in time, allowing them to take a shot on target and score off of it. So throughout this video, we talked about those steps to get that ball on top of your car and get some flicks going. It's going to take a lot of practice. Like I said earlier, you're going to have to practice it, have some discipline and take things slow one step at a time. Just like when you first learn how to walk, you fall over, you get back up and you try again. And then you eventually start walking, you start running, then you start sprinting, whatever it may be. You got to take it step by step and get comfortable with each step before moving on, making sure you're not skipping those steps. On top of that, dribbling is really important because it allows you to do all these other mechanics like what you're seeing on screen right now. I'm getting this ball under control, rolling it up the wall, and making these micro adjustments so that I can get that flip reset. Stuff like that is really important. And later on, it'll be something that you can utilize in your games for real, this kind of stuff. But first off, you're going to want to just stick to the basics. The basics are really important and they will help you in ranking up as well as advancing to every other mechanic later on. So with that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. If you have any kind of mechanic that you'd like me to show in a YouTube video, please comment down below about that because um, that'll kind of give me some inspiration on what I should do and what you guys are looking to learn. And other than that, I will be probably trying to do something like a, a road to GC for just focusing on what each rank needs to know. And that'll be something that's really useful because it'll be really related to what you guys need to hear instead of just kind of being like here to flex like other YouTube videos you might see. I'm just kind of trying to give you what you guys need to know. And then I can always point out things if you have any specific questions about something. So I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Please subscribe if you're if you're new to the YouTube channel as I will be trying to post bi-weekly and get some videos out that help keyboard and mouse players as well as just general any any other console if you're on PS4, Xbox, even Switch. You can watch these kind of videos and you can get an idea of how to perform each mechanic. Even if keyboard and mouse players do have access to this overlay, I'm still showing you guys how to do everything, going it through it step by step and focusing on the overall concepts. Um, so I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video and have a nice rest of your day.